Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome, I'm so glad you joined me today. Today I'm gonna to be sharing some stained glass flowers I've been making with you. That's what one of my subscribers named them. She saw them in a video and had questions. And these are like many of the other flowers I've made where I layer things up, but the trick is this base layer that I'm showing you right now, where I run a die through the machine twice with two different papers. And it has to be a certain type of die. So I'm gonna show you some ideas that'll work. Here I'm just showing you the variety of ones I've made. The grayish blue paper is actually paint. It's like a paint skin on top of thin paper. And then I ran it through the die cut machine. And in that one, I've used the set of stamps and dies that a bunch of us picked up at Tuesday morning and I just left it the way it was, chopped it out real quick. In this one, I've used some foil paper and paint skin. This one is two different paint skins. I've used glitter papers in them. I'm showing you the variety of papers that I use so you can look through your stash and figure out what might work. Here, I had a textured foil paper. That's fine. If you only have textured, use it. That's what I had. The thicker papers work a little better. So this tonic mirror card craft per perfect paper and probably the other mirror card stock that people have been picking up at Tuesday morning work really nice. The glitter paper that I picked up at Tuesday morning, the Heidi Swap, is thinner. It cuts wonderfully in dyes, but it's a little tougher to work with in this layering process because you're essentially paper piecing everything back together and it's like a puzzle, so sturdy pieces help a little. Here, let's look at the dies that, and different types that work for this. This bronze one at the top does not work for what I'm gonna show you today because the petals don't have a border and then the middle part for the petals. This one, see how there's a border in the center and there's a border around the petals and then you would cut out and have separate paper pieces for the petals, that's important. This one is close. The center does not cut. I'm not good at looking at dies and figuring that out when I buy them. This one is great for this. It's very complex. It's taken me some practice to use it. When you use the same die over and over, you get better at it and it gets easier. For today, the first flower, I've sped it up because I'm gonna do the more complex one in real time. This is a simple die that I chose. First, I'm going to set aside the middle parts and keep the border. And the reason that I'm keeping the border on the first one is because the middle pieces are tricky to figure out where they go sometimes because the petals are almost never the same. So on the second one, I will have the middle pieces set properly in the die and I'll know which one goes where instead of a bowl of them. You'll see, I'll show you what I'm doing. One night I punched a whole bunch of, or ran a whole bunch of them through the dye machine, put them all in bowls and got in bed. It still works out. It's just, I thought it might be a little easier for you. I use a center punch for the back because I want something to glue it to. I want my embellishments to be portable if they can, and I wanna be able to add to them and layer later. I just get started and see where it takes me. I'm putting art glitter glue in my little bottle that I don't really like onto it and I use art glitter glue because it allows me to jiggle things when they aren't perfectly straight. It allows me to pull it off if it wasn't the right pedal that goes in that space. It, I think it's more forgiving, but if you wanna use like a double-sided adhesive paper or something that you have, go for it. So see, I'm taking the piece straight out of the die once I figure out how they line up on the flower and putting it into the flower. So I don't have to figure out which one's which. I don't have to dig through a bowl or arrange them. Then I'm trimming the part of the backing circle that showed, just trimming it off with scissors. That's another advantage to using wet glue is you can tip the back away from the flower itself. Now I'm looking for something, maybe I have a different circle punch that I could back that with that would work better or a star punch so I don't have to trim it. I couldn't find one. So I just used the same punch again. 
Then I'm getting the border out of the die. The border is the very thick foil paper, so it's a little tricky. You have to negotiate it out and use your pins. And then here I have to figure out how all those pieces go. So imagine if you're using a much more complex flower, this one only has a total of, what, seven pieces that I have to figure out. And the middle one's pretty easy. The center, by the way, is almost never round. Don't worry about it. Just put it in the hole, jiggle it a little, it'll be fine. Nobody will notice. The other thing is, if you're going to layer up these flowers, don't even worry about putting the middle in. It's not going to show. You don't have to worry about the center if you're if it's not going to show. I haven't decided how I'm going to use these yet. I might mail them to one of you. You never know. So I, I make the center also. Plus, what am I going to do? Throw it away? I use every piece of these. I just cut them out differently. Now we're going to switch to a more complex version. And this is what brought up the question for this video anyway, is Christine, who has these dies asked if these are the ones I was using and the answer was no but when I thought about it and I had been considering it just because I was getting bored of making the same ones these will work they're just a little more complex when I purchased these I did not understand that it wasn't going to cut the flower away from the backing so what it does is it allows you to fold the petals up. This is the packaging for it. I've already taken the dies out. It allows you to fold the petals up and it has a stamp set with it too and everything. I bought it solely for the dies. Three flower dies for $4.99? Yes, please. But I didn't understand that it was a different style. It wasn't really meant to cut them free. So you have to take your scissors and cut it off the backing. That's the first step, okay? Then I'm going to set that whole flower aside. So at this point, I don't have separate border and petals like the other dies. That's okay. We'll get there. Then I'm going to use these little tiny scissors that are making me crazy. Noni has my scissors. She took them. Her husband's sharpening them, but she doesn't get up quite as early as me. So I'm going to check in with her today and see if my scissors are amazing now. Okay, so now I've cut it for the second time. That's the trick to the stained glass technique, right? Is you just take your die and you run it through twice. That paper's so thin, it folded it all forward. So that kind of confused me. I had to think about it. But then I decided I wanted it to go back. I wanted to do my cutting kind of pulling towards the back so that everything laid nice. One thing about these glitter papers that are super thin is if you have this die or a die like this where you have to do the trimming work, it is super easy to do the trimming. Those thick foil papers are a little harder to manage with this die. So maybe there are advantages to thin papers in this technique too. So when you look at that die up in the corner, you see that the petals go towards the center, but there aren't circles. It doesn't chop them out. And that was their style. That was what they wanted. Now I'm looking at this and trying to figure this out because there's another complexity in this die that I hadn't thought of. The petals don't touch each other in the center. See how far apart they are? If I put the circle of white cardstock, just slap that or some other scratch paper behind it that I've been doing, it's going to show. So I'm going back and forth and trying to figure it out. And I just decide to use this gold scallop because I want to show you the technique but we'll also talk about other options. Number one, I'm, I'm trimming between the petals, between the actual petals, so it looks nice as if it's going to show. If you're going to layer on top of it, this die set has three dies in it. So if you're going to use the biggest one and then put the middle one on top of it, no point in doing this. Wouldn't matter, wouldn't show at all, don't do it. I have used these and layered them and not carefully trimmed any of this. So that's something to keep in mind. Lots of times though, I'm just sitting around making embellishments and I wanna keep my options open. I don't wanna glue something together and then realize, oops, I do wanna use it at that level. And sometimes that's because I need something simpler so it will match. You might've noticed in the beginning of the video when I showed my embellishments, they didn't have center buttons or jewels or anything yet. They didn't have any bling in the middle. 
Sometimes I leave that part completely blank so I can tie it to the card, journal, or whatever I'm making at the end. I just leave it plain and then if you put, okay now watch, I'm starting to cut the petals out and in this I'm trying to be careful because I'm going to use these petals in the other version of the flower and I need that space to be fairly consistent so that all the other petals fit in it. Tedious? Yes. But I think you're going to like the result. So anyway, I don't put the bling in the center of my embellishments sometimes because I'm waiting to make them all match. If I'm going to have a card that has pink on it and I've used some pink jewels or I want to use pink jewels, I can put a pink jewel in the center of my super fancy handmade embellishment that's the same jewel that's on the card and it ties it all together. So it's not that I don't finish my embellishments, it's just that I like to customize them. That's just me. I kind of like things a little matchy-matchy. I know some people don't. I mixed gold and silver here. I don't think the world will end. I liked it and it was a paper I had handy. Now I have to trim these petals out of this one also. So that's what we're doing. While I'm doing this, let me tell you a couple things. I was doing a freeze with Cat and Paws, who is Gretchen, and... Uh, I watched her Friday night in my jammies video last night and she broke the freeze so I can go shopping this weekend. So I've been watching the Tuesday morning hauls and there's some good stuff out there. And I know Hobby Lobby's doing some 75% off clearance and their fine art stuff. So I might have to take a stroll down that aisle. I'm, I'm glad you cracked Gretchen. I was starting to crack. Half a month was a long time for me. Okay, so now, because I've never used this die before, I have to stop and think about how am I going to put this together? Where does the glue go? On this one, the glue can't go all over the gold piece of paper because we know some parts of it are going to show. So I need to put the glue on the back of the die. Also, I noticed that some of my fussy cutting was pretty terrible, so I'm straightening out those sections. And... Then I'm putting the glue onto it. And then I realize I can't put glue right there because that thing is not big enough. So I just wipe it off with my fingers. Nothing fancy. Art glitter glue is pretty forgiving in about the first, yeah, five to 10 seconds. That's one of the things I like about it. Then I'm finishing that out. And you can tell this part of the video, I, I've slowed it down. It's, it's a little sped up, but not quite as fast as some others. Sorry, my hair gets in there a lot in this video, but it was really detailed work and I kept leaning forward. Then, because this is the first time I've done this with this die, I'm just testing them, I'm dry fitting them. Before I put any glue in, I'm checking to see. One thing that I did like about this die is all the petals are the same. That's the first time I've done this with any die and all the petals are the same. Of course, they're only the same if you cut them fairly straight. And then I'm lifting them up and putting the glue down. You can use tweezers, you can use your fingers, you can use whatever you want. It, it does not matter. Then setting that last one down. And I'm gonna show you at the end some ideas that you could do with this. If I was making a card and I wanted to use this, I can't remember if I told you already. I would probably not use that gold scallop in the back. I would probably mount this right onto my card and that would be my backing. So there you go. It'll look even better after the dr glue dries because then it won't show. So I'm just showing you some ideas. What I do is I have a bunch of stuff die cut and sitting around and I layer it up and try it. Oh, there's a bigger flower. I know the colors aren't really working, but I'm just trying to show you different examples. That is a super cute flower. And if you're going to layer like that, all of that careful cutting that I did doesn't really matter, right? You could shortcut a whole bunch of those. I have a giveaway for a t-shirt going on. The, the t-shirt's gonna go to Christine. I'll put her name up on the screen. And I'm showing you the other dies in the set and how you could layer them. I would probably do two layers and then put some other flowers. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.